Hi, I'm Adam Lloyd, heading up marketing communications for networks at Ericsson. Welcome to Tech Unveiled. Our first season is dedicated to Open RAN and how it can help shape the networks of the future. In today's episode, I meet two people who can shed some light on the Open RAN challenges and what needs to happen to overcome them. Our first guest is Gillian Leach, Head of Solution Line Service Management Orchestration at Ericsson. Hi. Hey, Gillian. And also joined by our second guest, Gabriel Foglander. Hey, Gabriel. Hello, Adam. Gabriel is looking after many aspects of our Open RAN product portfolio. We have a lot to talk about, so I think we should go and grab a coffee. Let's do that. We see a lot of attention and, and headlines around Open RAN. Uh, promising the future commitments, should we say. Um, what are the type of challenges, especially from the CTO community, that, mm. that we face? Well, I think we try to condense it into three main areas. So we have one we call adoption, one is deployment, and the third one is interoperability. I think between the three you cover quite a big spectrum. So in the adoption space, I think you have, you talk about infusing new technology into an existing networks. Uh, and then, of course, you have to keep existing performance running. Uh, what that means is that you need to apply technology that, that's not necessarily new, but you apply it to new domains, so new requirements come into the picture. So you need to make sure that all the contributors to that technology solution actually are aware of what's needed to, to deliver a good performance. That's number one. Then you also have to consider the timing, right? So if you plan a network build out, you need to say, when is the right time for me to impart open run technology in my plan? And that answer could very well depend on what, what else are you going, what are you doing? And, and so for dependencies on other implementations. Then I think thirdly, adoption is not only about technology. It's also about how will I adjust my operating procedures, the way people embrace technology and how they utilize it to get the maximum effect out of it. And that's, you know, on top of the technology itself. So together, those are three, three key pillars to adoption, I think. On that adoption note as well, Gillian, I mean, some may argue that Ericsson have been slow to the open RAN race, uh, you know, dragging our heels a little bit. How do you respond to that? I see it a bit differently, actually. I, th I think we've had a mindful approach and been pragmatic in, in how we've been addressing this. For us, it's always about achieving the right performance in an industrialized product at a global scale. And I think we're, we're there now. We see the industry is aligning. We, we spend a lot of time with our customers, listening to what they want, talking to our industry partners and trying to, to, to get to a level where we can see we, we're, we're having the performance that we need for 5G networks. That's the adoption side of things. Then you mentioned deployment. Yep. And I guess a lot of that is not necessarily the technology itself, but how that's implemented into the network. How do mm. we uh, support the mobile operators in that, uh, in that challenge? I mean, so the, the ultimate objective, as we discussed, is a high performing network. And, and I think with integrated run, we have had uh, 20, 30 years to accumulate experience together with our customers and partners on how to, to achieve that. What we need to do now is we need to in, take that knowledge and infuse it into an open round platform uh, together with, with other partners in the ecosystem. And you have to consider things like, what does the site look like? What are the transport commitments? What, what's the sync solution? Uh, how will I solve for the, the lifecycle management of software in the different layers and so forth? Form factors in cabinets, very practical things. And they have been carefully honed in, in the integrated solution. Now we need to make sure that they are ready also in an open run context. And for our point of view, we are, of course, doing our part. We're making sure that our radios are prepared to support new open frontal standards. And we, I think we have some 1 million mass and MIMO radios deployed in field that can use the new open interface. Um, but I, I think this is just the, the first wave of deployment. And then I think the, the, the challenge that goes from that point onward is also the life cycle management. Because here we will also be reliant on, on a new management and orchestration paradigm. Yeah, and I, I think when it comes to the management stack, apart from you have RAN solutions that are pre-integrated and, and, and we want to deploy them as efficiently as we do our own integrated solutions. But we want to make sure that we, we do as much first time right when we go to site so that together with the partners that, that we have in this space that we can actually avoid driving too much cost into the organization through costly um, services or, or revisit of sites. And, 
When you look at the management stack that Oran have defined, it's a, it's a really good architectural blueprint, but the definition is too narrow actually for our customers to realize the TCO benefits that they need. So solutions in this space, I believe, need to be extended to also consider the install base, what's already out there, both in LTE and 5G, in order to maximize the, the full potential of a horizontal architecture. I guess that leaves us then with the last challenge you mentioned, interoperability. How do we, how do we deal with that challenge? I think Gabriel will touch on the RAN side because where we need to, to do pre-integrated solutions. But we, we have a, not all interfaces are equally complex. So in the management space, I think while we have a really good suite of our own R apps that we'll, we'll offer to the market as a pre-integrated out of the box, we also have a platform play with the SMO that we're offering where we want to empower customers to develop use cases that they need to drive their business forward trying to speed up the pace of innovation and also um, offer an environment for third parties to actually reduce the barrier to entry so they can also offer their solutions to the to our customers. Yep. On the RAN side, how, how does that look there? I mean, we, we took a really huge step forward last year with the introduction of a new frontal split. And we did that together with many of the partners and customers in the industry in the Oron Alliance. So that was amazing. Now, if you want to implement that, you also need to understand quite a bit what's happening on the, on the software side in the, in the RON and also as well in the radio side. So achieving interoperability will require an integration project where you actually you know, calibrate the IoT profile and the, and the parameters that you will uh, coordinate. And then you will do regression testing to understand that the features are running properly. And then you kind of secure the first day one integration. After that point, though, you need to secure that the radio will continue to be interoperable throughout the life cycle. And many radios can sit in the network from seven to 10 years. So you need to sustain that solution uh, throughout software apps, uh, update life cycles uh, and make sure that the interoperability is not broken. And that is uh, an, an amazing achievement if you can do that in a multi-vendor environment because it's quite complex already within our own portfolio. It takes a lot of effort. So that's where I think pre-integration will kick in and you will also complement it with the services uh, piece of it. But I think you mentioned it earlier, it's also super important that when we introduce new technology, we also change our operational processes. Mm. Because if you want to realize the full potential, then you have to be able to adapt both operationally and organizationally to embrace the, the technology. Three main challenges then to overcome. I mean, adoption, deployment and interoperability. It's a great discussion. Thank you very much. I think we should probably head back now. Thank you. Yes, you So a lot of challenges in as we chart the path towards large-scale open RAN networks. Yeah, saying interoperability is one of them. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> Gabriel, thanks Gideon, for today. Thank you. Bye bye. And that's it for today. Thanks very much for joining us. Don't miss the next episode as we dive deeper into the building blocks of the networks of the future. Until then. Goodbye.